I'm going to walk through a process you can use to check your competitors' keywords. Now, there's a few reasons you'd want to do this. Kind of the main reason and the main uh, benefit of checking your competitor keywords is going to be coming up with new content ideas or new keywords that you can potentially use in your own strategy. So using what competitors have already done and leveraging that can be a good way to get ideas that you might not have thought of otherwise. So to do this analysis, I tend to either use Ahrefs or SEMrush. There's tons of other tools out there now that you can use as well. But um, the process really for using all those tools will be pretty similar. Uh, most of them are going to have a feature like Site Explorer where you can put in your competitor's domain. So I'm going to use hrefs.com for the example. And what this is going to return is a bunch of data points about uh, hrefs.com. So what I'm most concerned with right now are going to be keywords and top pages. So on the left menu, there's organic keywords and top pages. So I tend to like to open those tabs. You could also open up the keyword report by clicking here. And then we're going to focus mostly on organic keywords in this video, but there's also uh, paid search keywords as well, where I can click on this and let's do that first. And this will give me a of the keywords that hrefs.com is bidding on. It'll also give you things like the ad copy they're running. If you see that and some, some other data points on their URLs. So you can get uh, paid search competitor keywords and you could also get organic. So this is the organic keyword report. Now this is going to have all of the keywords that Ahrefs is ranking for organically. And you can see the position that they rank in. I tend to like to export this data into a Google sheet so I can work with it there, but you can use all of these different filtering capabilities to actually filter and uh, drill in on a certain aspect of the data. So maybe you want to filter it to only the keywords where they're on page one. So you could do something like that. Um, or maybe you want to actually see keywords that are on page two that they're not uh, getting traffic for that maybe you could jump ahead of them on. So there's a bunch of ways you can use those filters. You could also filter by difficulty. Like let's say we want to have keywords less than uh, 20 of difficulty. We can apply that filter and now get a list of the low difficulty keywords that Ahrefs or whoever our competitor is, is ranking for. So that's kind of the first way is just taking one competitor and just going through each of their keywords individually. There's also the content gap tool, which is my favorite way on analyzing competitor keywords. Because you can cross reference and look at multiple competitors at one time. So for this example, um, we will put in Ahrefs, then we could put in SEMrush, and let's put in Moz as well. And you could add more. One of the things I like about the Ahrefs content gap is you could add up to 10 competitors. SEMrush does has a, have a similar feature. Um, the downside of using SEMrush, which you had right here, their keyword gap is I believe you can only go up to, let's see one, two, yeah, five competitors. So you are a little more limited with the number of competitors, um, but depending on how many you're trying to analyze, this may or may not work. Both tools are essentially the same. Um, this feature you could use if you wanted to put your own website in here. This would show all of the keywords competitors rank for, but your website does not. Sometimes I'll even put my website in here with the competitors so I could see where I rank next to them. That's actually my preferred way to use the tool. But um, that's kind of the main thing. I like to check this off so at least one competitor is on page one. Otherwise, you'll get tens of thousands of keywords sometimes. But it's good to experiment with this on or off. Uh, when you have this off, you'll see um, also keywords that competitors maybe aren't doing as well for. But um, I tend to keep that setting enabled, and then we'll click Show Keywords. So then this is going to run the reports, and it's going to show all of the situations where, yeah, competitors are uh, ranking for keywords. And the intersection is pretty important. I like to get rid of one and basically only show when at least two competitors are ranking. So we know multiple keywords, uh, multiple competitors are saying those keywords are important. That's my favorite way to use this. And now we get keywords like these where multiple competitors are on page one. And we can start to see, in this case, Ahrefs is in position nine. So they're on the bottom of page one for paraphrasing tool. SEMrush is in the top four. And then Moz is not ranking and not targeting that keyword yet. So I like to export this and I'll typically format it so it looks like this where I'll add in a little column to count the number of competitors and I sort that way. And now I get all the keywords and we can visually see how each uh, competitor are targeting it. So again, we can start to see who is ranking well. I highlight page two in yellow and then page three and lower 
uh, in red. So you can quickly start to look for gaps. If this was my website, what I'd be looking for here is a few things. I would want to know where I am doing well, but I'd also want to see situations where there's no number, which means I'm not ranking at all. Typically for those keywords, it usually means that you don't have the right piece of content on your website yet. So if you see any keyword that you would deem important and there's no number here, that's a good indication that you need a new piece of content. So it's a really quick way you can make a content plan just by plucking out the keywords that you're not ranking at all for and then putting a plan together to write content for those target keywords. You could also look for keywords that are on page two. Those could be low hanging fruit to optimize or build backlinks to try to get those onto page one. So there's lots of ways you could use uh, this data. If there's one particular competitor you want to focus on, you can sort uh, by the keywords they're ranking the best for. You can use volume or difficulty as sorting. So it's one of the reasons I like to work with this in the spreadsheet directly. This also makes a really good deliverable for a client if you're running this analysis for your client, where it's a visual report and you could really show them some of the um, insights and build out the your content strategy with this data. So that's kind of my favorite method. I also tend to use the top pages report in Ahrefs, which this will show you competitor keywords, but it's going to kind of organize it by the pages that are driving your competitor the most traffic, or at least they're estimating it that way. And then on the right here, you can see the uh, top keyword the page ranks for. So again, this is a good way to get a feel for like what content your competitors have produced. And you could follow a similar process and start looking for keywords that are valuable to your audience and adding those to your content strategy, whether you have a page that you can optimize or whether you need a new page developed. Um, this is a really good report to see what's working for your competitors and how can you incorporate that into your strategy. Now to use SEM rush to do this, it's a very similar process. The naming of the tools will be different, but you would also just put in your competitors uh, domain. So we'll go to the um, domain overview tool here. And when this loads, what we're going to do is we're going to um, essentially put in, we'll, do, we'll also use Ahrefs for this example, their domain. So let me grab that here. And I will show kind of what the reporting looks like. And it's very similar where you can look at organic keywords and you can also look at paid keywords. Now, I didn't touch on paid keywords too much, but I do think it's important in an organic strategy to also look at paid keywords. Because what that's telling me is these are the keywords that my competitor thinks are valuable enough to pay for. So and that might mean they're getting a return and an ROI on those keywords. So they might make sense to target organically if, they're, if your competitors are willing to pay for them. Now, you can't always rely on that. There could be situations where your competitors are bidding on keywords that are not getting conversions and it's not driving an ROI and they're still running those ads. But it's, all, it's a good indication that you should kind of drill into that further. And if you can rank for those keywords organically, it's um, a, a great way to go about it. So here you'll see we have organic traffic and paid search traffic. So these are gonna take you, and we'll open up both of these, to the report that's gonna have your organic keywords and paid keywords. So here we're gonna be able to see, again, very similar data, all the organic keywords that Ahrefs is targeting. We have their URL that's ranking. Again, we could use uh, some filtering in the top here. We can export this on the right. So all the same features. Um, there are some tabs here for some other additional reports, like the top pages report is right here in the tab. Uh, so a little bit different than where Ahrefs locates it. In this version, here is the paid keyword report. So again, you have the tabs here to navigate to different reports. And then we could start to see the, the keywords Ahrefs is paying for on Google ads. Now, if I hover over ad, very similar feature, I could see the ad copy as well. So using that method of either analyzing an individual competitor in SEMrush or Ahrefs, and then also creating a content gap report will give you a great starting point when you're building out your own keyword strategy. And it's often one of the first things I'll do when I'm working with a new client or working on a new website. It can get you up to speed quickly on the keywords that are available in that industry. And it, it'll give you some situations where the keywords that you want to incorporate into your strategy that you may not have thought of just using traditional and manual keyword research methods.